Hello, welcome back to Pack Rats Shack. You know, sometimes that's just the way it goes. You finally get to that project you've been waiting months to get to, only to discover that every time you turn a corner, you're making another mistake. <sighs> oh well, I persevered, and I struggled my way all the way to the end. And now, looking back on it, no one's gonna know. I mean, other than you who are watching. <laughs> but it did get me to thinking, which do I have the most of in this project? Repurposed materials being used for my build or the mistakes that I've made during the build? I found myself tallying these up as I was making my edits. I hope you find this entertaining as well. Okay then, let's just get started. Hi, my name is Packy, creator of Pack Rats Shack. I upcycle furniture, build out of pallet wood, finish interior spaces, and have a vendor booth for my creations. Welcome to my world. Now I've been thinking about what to do here for years, but it's just been in the last few months that the actual idea came to mind and then thinking about it for all of that time to come up with the best process. It was after I remodeled the full bath and I decided not to reuse the mirror doors that were in the medicine cabinet that I refinished because not only were all of the mirrors not in perfect condition still on the front side but the backs were really nasty looking and by opening them as doors you see the back all of the time and when you've just remodeled a complete bathroom and everything looks brand new those mirrors just didn't set well for me to leave in that space but they're still perfectly good mirrors to use in different scenarios and i've already used the other two on other projects and this one is still a really good mirror and you won't see the backside in this application. First thing I do is make a frame for it. Then I set into making the light box at the top. This is just a concept plan that I have in my head. I have not spent the time to make a specific plan. The only rule that I set for myself is I cannot exceed the overall width being 25 inches. So I just keep adding layer by layer, trim piece by trim piece until I build it up the way I want it to look. I start the light box foundation with leftover one bys. I'm using my chop saw and table saw when necessary to cut my pieces to size. And where it's necessary, I do sand off any raised loose fibers of wood, but I am not going to take the time to sand this down to a smooth perfection. I already know with all of the different leftover pieces that I'm using that this is going to be a painted project. Then I'm going to just glue, clamp, and finish now everything together as I go. I find that cleaning my spots where sticker prices are removed with a paint thinner or mineral spirits gets all of the sticky residue off. 
Sometimes when you don't do this, and even if you've sanded the area, you think you have a good clean surface, but when you paint across it, that tackiness grabs the paint different and just highlights where that sticker price was. I have to make sure I square up these base pieces as I install them. Then I'll reinforce them at the top with corner pieces left over from my recent steampunk project. I did have to make them smaller to fit this project. But I'm not really sure if this qualifies as a mistake. I mean, my cut was right. I just went ahead and counted it as a mistake because really, if I had made sure that the second nail I shot in wasn't in line with the first one I shot in, this probably would have never split out. I only have enough scrap for one more piece, so hopefully there's no more screw ups. See, by offsetting the nail locations, it didn't split out. So, I guess that's definitely another mistake on my part. <laughs> Clamps just weren't working for me in this scenario, and I really just didn't want to build a stop block in order for them to work. So I just go ahead and tape these tightly into place. This is what it's looking like so far. Are you able to visualize my plan yet? It's kind of nice to know my mistakes haven't exceeded my supply list yet. <laughs> I mean, how many mistakes can one make on a simple little project? <laughs> It seems like especially with quarter round pieces, I really have to set my return pieces of trim into place where I would like them to be in order to mark the directionality my cut and angle needs to go. I don't know why quarter round seems to get flipped in my head by the time I get from the piece to the table saw, but I guess we all have our setbacks, right? <laughs> so that's what I'm doing with this piece before I go out and cut it. Then I know to do exactly the opposite for the other side. See, easy peasy, perfectly cut 45 degree returns on the quarter round.
I keep filling my nail holes as I go because typically my first layer leaves a sink hole in it so I got to clean off the excess and then refill again after that's dry. Now I'm playing with the router. This is the whole big deal of the plan. This is what I knew I wanted to do and I just had to process what I wanted the outcome to be in order to figure out how I wanted to build it. I'm cutting out an opening for the lighting to shine through and wash the upper wall and ceiling. This is going to be a secondary lighting source in the potty room. I hate saying half bath because nobody's taking a bath in there, right? I mean, I guess somebody might be like washing their face in the sink or something if the other bathroom's being occupied and you get something in your eye or something. I don't know. But why we call these rooms half baths, I don't know since nobody's really bathing in them. This took several passes to get all the way through. I probably babied it a little too much and could have taken more with each one, but it just generates so much debris that with each pass that I take, I have to go ahead and sweep up my workspace, not only so that I can see, but so that the routering tool can also get all the way to the stop plate. Otherwise, there's so much debris in the way that it stops short. Now I'm finishing the cut opening out with a slight round over. I go ahead and do this on both sides even though nobody's going to see the inside surface just because it softens the whole opening up. Well, here's another mistake. I need to go ahead and remove these staples so that the router won't hit any metal. I think really only one's in the way and another one might be too close, but I'm just going to take all four corners out to be safe. I really should have planned ahead for this and just stapled slightly back further. Then I proceed with marking out and routering the groove for the mirror to set down into. I didn't make the groove wide enough at the top and bottom edges, so now I need to do another pass on those two edges, but now it fits just right. I plan on hanging my build with a set of French cleats, or freedom cleats as Spinsley would say. <laughs> I don't know why we all think we need to patent our terminologies or whatnot, but <laughs> I guess that does make it fun. And they have a lot more following than I do because, you know, quite frankly, I'm I'm just not I'm just not as fun to listen to, I think. <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm using this system because I know I can anchor into at least one stud this way and the cleat will provide a lot more support for the weight of the mirror and light box. I had one finish nail seat too deep and it popped through the other side. I'm just filing it down flush with my metal flat file. It's really an easy fix. Not sure, does that qualify as a mistake? You tell me. Okay here, now my mistakes are bypassing my supplies. <laughs> maybe I should start counting every nail and the glue and, oh yeah, maybe the wood filler too so I can redeem myself that my supplies at least outnumber my mistakes. Oh my gosh, it's kind of embarrassing. But this project's a great tool to show you that we all make mistakes, even on certain videos where we're showing you what we built to make something better if we don't nitpick and show you every mistake we make we all make mistakes and it does not matter once you get to the end of the project This top piece was a tad too long. Now it's just a tad bit too short. I overshot. So it's just going to have to be filled in at this point. Oh, and then this corner splits on me. Wow, my mistakes are just racking up fast. <laughs> and I continue with cleaning off the excess of my nail filler, refilling, sanding, caulking, all of these things layer by layer. Again, sometimes it just takes a couple of times before the nail holes are completely filled because that filler tends to shrink back as it dries, even when I overfill them.
Well, you can see one pocket screw pulled in so tight that it actually pushed the material out on the front. Well, this is because it's not real wood. This is that sawdust composite glue form molded trim, whatever you call it. And I'll say, I used to really, really frown at some of these engineered products, but the quality of wood trim that is in the local box stores is so horribly bowed, crooked, and unreal that I've actually bent my train of thought and sometimes prefer these engineered products because they're straight as an arrow and the front moldings of these have come a long ways to where they don't look cheap after they've been installed and these particular pieces of trim was a chair rail that I installed many years ago in the house that Nova has moved into. As you can see, she took it down and it didn't bust all into pieces. It stayed strong and I'm even able to reuse it. So I think that proves that it's a usable product. And I understand a lot of people frown on it and I used to too. But I'm telling you, in the last few years, I've really actually preferred it in some cases over others because it just looks so much better and is so much easier to install because you're not trying to manipulate it straight. I understand there's a lot of people who only believe in real wood, but the reality is that is starting to become less and less quality unless you're going to go somewhere where you're spending big bucks on it. And I just am in a spot in life where I don't have the big bucks to spend, even if ideally I would love to have the higher end finishes. This mistake's not even known yet, but I should have left more space on the back side of this frame for the mirror. I was thinking that by adding the depth of a paint stick, it would be the space that would make this mirror flush to the wall because I'm using paint sticks as the stops for the mirror once the mirror is put into place. Turns out that even though I thought I was planning ahead, I really didn't foresee the whole totality of the problem. Once I was trying to install this on the wall, this top edge that's mounted to the light box actually wasn't flush and it smashed against the wall so tightly that the bottom of the mirror wanted to tilt out. I probably should have routered the mirror depth just a little bit lower. That way the mirror would have set just below the surface of the frame rather than right on the surface of the frame and then all of the paint sticks would have actually been more flush. Of course, before you go playing with electric, Make sure the breaker is flipped off. All of that work only to discover after the fact that I should have wired it an entirely different way. The cover that I had got for this method just isn't going to work because it sticks out way too far. And I know that my light box isn't going to be installed on that French cleat and set flush to the wall if that cover is sticking 3 16 of an inch out from the wall. After realizing all of this, I call my electrician buddy who instructed me to instead wire the female end of a cord replacement and then I could have a plastic cover that fits flush that I could cut that specific size hole in the center of.
The opening in the back of this light box is only so big and the outlet needs to clear the bottom framing of the box as well as the French cleat on the wall. So this needs to get moved. In hindsight, I think this is where my biggest mistake was. I really should have made the back opening of the light box so much taller from top to bottom. Because after this whole thing is installed and you look at it, that mirror could have came down even another two or three inches and it still would have been in a good position. Having the height opening in the back of the box would have resolved a lot of the outlet issues, I believe. And then the only issue would have been is still having a plug-in that had um, extension off of it onto the side rather than the front. So when I bring it up, I'm going to try to hold it and then put it on and hold it up there. And then you got to feed it all the way into the plug. Yep, there. Yeah, you got to plug it in and then and then um, try not to pull too much cord out of the back of it because it's tucked in the thing. So I got to kind of hold it tight and it might. The bigger side plug is here and the littler is up there. So you're. And I get Nova to help me put the mirror light box into place only to find out now that the plug of the light itself is far too long and sticks out from the wall too far for us to be able to fit this and mount it flush to the wall. I'm not sure if this qualifies as a mistake or just a discovery along the way. I mean, I think this is just figuring out the best way to make the electric work with what I created so i guess you tell me is this a mistake to be added to the count or is this just a discovery along the way i don't know <laughs> So now I'm off to the store again to find one of those flat plug-ins so that the light could be plugged in in a way where it wasn't sticking so far out from the wall. And while I had the box down anyways, I went ahead and took the mirror off of the light box and moved it forward. And while I was doing that anyways, I decided to reinforce the top piece of trim by gluing a piece of Luon to that top surface. That also created added depth for it to be off of the back edge of the light box. But on top of that, I still did set it back another eighth of an inch or so. I wanted to make sure that when I reinstalled this light box for the third time, that this mirror would not be smashing against the wall at all so that I could get the light box to seat into the French cleat completely and be flush against the wall. And I was hoping this would resolve the problem with the bottom of the mirror wanting to stick out from the wall awkwardly. And 
And now finally, the last thing to do is the last coats of paint. Being that this thing was on and off so many times and I've accidentally knocked it into stuff, there's some dark spots coming through the couple of layers of paint that I've already done. So I go ahead and I just touch up the darkest areas first, feathering the paint out along the way so there's no stopping points. And then after that dries, I come back and I do one final coat of paint. And it's now finally done. Unfortunately, there's not enough room to take great staging pictures. But on top of that, with my imminent move coming up and most of my small unneeded items already being moved down, I really don't have anything to stage with this to make it more inviting. But I'm hoping this video served as a point and a purpose to show you what you can create with just leftover pieces from other projects in a way to try to use as much product as available that's left over to minimize waste. But I'm really hoping that you can see what the point of my idea was. A nice subtle washing of light coming up across the ceiling for the times that you don't want the harsh bold overhead lighting on. Thank you for watching to the end and I hope through all of the mistakes you still found inspiration to get going on your idea. There are plenty of opportunities for you to learn your way through and fix the problems as they come. And when you get to the end you will feel great about yourself for finally conquering yet another hurdle and you will be pleased at what you were able to create. Please show me that you like this video, and as always, until next time, stay safe out there.